Hi guys! Currently, you can find on the market several different upgrade boards for the Creality Ender 3, 3 Pro, Ender 5 and CR10. Today, we will test a couple of them from MakerBase. The Robin E3 and Robin E3D. What are the differences between them? How will they perform? And so on. You want to know more? Stay tuned! Hey you guys, welcome back! But before we start, and if you are not a subscriber yet, go ahead and click on the subscribe button so you can follow all our videos. And if you like our work and wish to help us make more cool videos, please join our Patreon page or click on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, today we have a couple of upgrade boards for the Creality Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 5 and CR10. Both are from MakerBase and were designed to be a simple plug-and-play installation. One of them is this Robin E3. It's a 32-bit board and it's equipped with four non-replaceable TMC2209 drivers. It has the same form factor, so it's a direct replacement of the stock board. The only difference you will notice on the installation, if you have this version, is on the screw type connectors. The stock board has an extra connector for the hot end fan, and this version of the Robin does not which means that you will need to connect the hot end fan together with the wires that come from the power supply. Online, we can see another version of the Robin that already includes this connector at the corner. The Robin includes a few extras that the stock one does not have. Aside from the connector for the stock Ender 3 display, it also includes a couple of more and without orientation, making it compatible with many other types of displays. It also includes connectors for NeoPixel, BL Touch, and filament runout sensor. Near the USB connector, we have a jumper for the board power selection that can be either from USB or from the main voltage. It also includes an extra Z-axis output connector in case you upgrade the printer with a dual Z motor. And next to each driver, we can find a couple of pins. If we want to use the sensorless homing feature of these drivers, we need to use a jumper and short these pins. The Robin E3D is basically the same as the E3, except for the drivers. On this one, you can decide which drivers to install and it supports direct UART and SPI connection. At the back of the board, we have the instructions for the jumper locations according to which type of setup we want to use. The quality of the PCB and solder joints looks very good and there are no signs of flux on the board. All the pins are labeled for easy configuration. Now for the installation. The E3 includes four heat sinks, so we start with those. Next, we need to take the stock board out. On the Ender 3, there are three screws securing the cover panel that we need to take out. For the Ender 3 Pro, the screws and cover panel are located on the bottom side. Be careful when removing the cover panel, because the board's cooling fan is attached to it. Before disconnecting anything, make sure you take notes of each cable's and wire's location on the board. Some have labels on them, but others do not. The board is secured with four small screws. The wires that connect to the screw type connectors don't have ferrules, and some are tinned. 
so it's a great opportunity to crimp ferrules to them. As we mentioned in the beginning, the robin board does not have the connector for the hot end fan, so we need to crimp those together with the 24 volt input wires. The rest of the wires are connected in the same places as the stock board. The Z stepper motor can be connected to any of the Z output connectors since both are connected in parallel. Before closing the panel, it's good practice to test a few things such as moving the axis, homing the printer and heating up the bed and the nozzle. In our case, everything was working fine, so it was ok to close the cover panel. The firmware installed in the Robin is Marlin 2.0.1. In there, we have access to several settings, including the driver settings. All the drivers are set up in stealth shop mode, except for the extruder. Strange enough is that we could not find any option to store changes to the EPROM. We then ran a correlation print using the same G-code used with the stock board. The stepper motors run completely silent, and we didn't notice any issues of skip steps on X and Y or even with the extruder. Next, we tested the E3D. To configure the drivers, we have a series of jumper pins that we need to set up before we can install the drivers. At the back of the board, we have the different setup configurations. To test this board, we have these TMCs 2209 from MakerBase. These can be set up with UART communication, so the jumpers need to be installed this way. All the connections are exactly the same as the ones we have made with the E3. One thing that we noticed when closing the cover panel was that the cooling fan was hitting the extruder's driver heatsink and therefore we could not close the cover panel. We quickly designed and printed a piece to raise the cover panel 5mm and this way we were able to close it. And then we printed again the same correlation G-code to compare all three. We also checked the board's temperature while printing, and the only component that is a bit hotter was the extruder driver. We even left the board's cooling fan out and it kept on printing fine without it. As we mentioned before, these boards have BL-Touch support, so we can easily install one. The firmware is compiled with platform I.O. and the bin file is saved in the memory card. The firmware is automatically uploaded to the board 
when the printer is turned on. With the firmware update, we enable the Store to EEPROM option, but the information is not being saved to the EEPROM. The only way to save the changes is to first insert the memory card in, and then click on Store Settings. If we do this, the settings are saved and correctly restored. This means that all the settings are stored in a file in the memory card instead of the traditional EEPROM. And the reason for this is because the microcontroller used in these two boards is not equipped with an internal EEPROM. It also means that every time we turn the printer on, we must guarantee that this memory card is already in. If we turn the printer on without the memory card, the default firmware settings are loaded instead. Regarding the print quality and analyzing the prints done with the same G-code, we can clearly see from the cabin walls that the stock board has issues with salmon scan effect. The maker baseboards running with TMC drivers eliminated that salmon skin effect completely, which is an improvement in print quality. All the rest seems exactly the same. The print quality improvement and making the printer run the stepper motor silent is a good investment to think about. You only need to choose which model you prefer best. You can check links for these boards in the description below. And that's it you guys, hope you liked the video and if yes, please give it a like. Also, if you are not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to follow us also on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We will see you guys next time, bye!